Imagine a weapon that kills with silence. No crack of artillery, no tracer rounds, no smoke trail curling across the sky. Just a focused flash of invisible energy, a microwave hammer, and the buzzing cloud of hostile drones stops midair, like a video buffering at the worst moment. That's the promise of Britain's truck-mounted rapid destroyer, a radio frequency directed energy weapon that recently proved it could track, target, and shut down swarms. In a war where cheap flying robots are everywhere, a system that can fry them by the dozen isn't a gadget, it's a new grammar for the battlefield. For years, militaries prayed the drone problem could be solved with more of the same. Missiles, guns, and better radars. That worked against big, expensive targets. It does not scale against the blizzard of quadcopters, first-person view kamikazes, and loitering munitions that now define combat from Kharkiv to Kherson. The attacker pays a few hundred dollars, the defender spends thousands per intercept. Microwave weapons flip the math. Instead of throwing steel, you throw energy. Every shot costs fuel and time, not a missile from a dwindling magazine. That's why Britain's April 2025 trial mattered. Soldiers used a homegrown RF weapon to defeat multiple swarms, with the program reporting over a hundred drones tracked, engaged, and defeated across trials. A proof point that directed energy can be more than a lab demo. So what is Rapid Destroyer, mechanically? Picture a ruggedized truck carrying power generation, cooling, and a beam-forming array. The array emits high-power microwave pulses that couple into a drone's electronics, inducing currents in places designers never intended. Radios saturate, flight controllers brown out, and guidance brains stumble into reboot land. Depending on the pulse profile, you can cause a graceful landing or a sudden electronic coma. The charm is breath. A microwave beam is wide compared to a laser, making it well-suited for swarms. The US Air Force's Thor system demonstrated the same principle against multiple targets at Kirtland, validating the physics from another angle. Britain's Rapid Destroyer puts that logic on a mobile, potentially brigade-escortable chassis. Now, this is 2025, not a Cold War pamphlet. Drones aren't just remote-controlled toys anymore, they're increasingly autonomous. Ukraine's battlefield has accelerated the marriage of AI and automation with unmanned systems, and nowhere was that more obvious than Operation Spiderweb in June 2025, a sprawling, multi-airbase strike inside Russia that used more than a hundred drones, launched from hidden platforms and coordinated across five time zones. The operation was a masterclass in scale, deception, and software-driven control, and it sent a blunt message. Autonomy is not coming, it's here. Any counter-drone system fielded late 2025 onward has to assume targets that can navigate, reroute, and re-attack without continuous control links. Can Rapid Destroyer keep up with AI-guided swarms? The short answer is yes, if its brain grows as fast as its brawn. Britain's own strategy documents now talk openly about a force mix where crews manage networks of uncrewed and consumable systems, implying that AI-assisted C2, sensor fusion, and real-time target prioritization must migrate into every air defense layer, including directed energy. Pairing RFDEW with AI-enabled detection and fire control is the obvious upgrade path. Classifiers that spot drone types by radar cross-section and RF signature. Predictive tracking that chooses pulse timing to hit when guidance loops are most vulnerable. Friend or foe safeguards to avoid cooking your own quadcopters. UK defence policy has already embedded autonomy and AI as core pillars for rapid modernisation. The right doctrinal soil for spiral upgrades to Rapid Destroyer's software stack. Here's where things get spicy. Russia is not sitting still. As Ukrainian interceptor drones improved, Russian units began fielding radio detector payloads on their SuperCam class platforms, a rough but effective way to sense an approaching intercept and trigger evasive maneuvers or decoys. Open source reports also point to stepped up integration of foreign radar kits to expand low RCS detection against UAS. This is the chess match in the ether. You build an invisible hammer, your opponent invents an invisible helmet. That tug of war means Rapid Destroyer cannot be just a point solution. It has to plug into electronic support measures, decoy management, and multi-sensor queuing, 
a team sport where RF, radar, EO slash IR, and even acoustic nets talk to each other faster than the drones can adapt. If you're Ukraine, the path forward is layered, local, and lethal. Kyiv isn't waiting around for a single silver bullet. It's scaling domestic and European CUAS simultaneously. The Skyranger 35, a turreted gun with airburst ammo and sensors, is now heading to Ukraine on Leopard 1 holes in an EU-funded package, adding mobile hard-kill capacity that can ride with mechanized units. Combine a Skyranger battery with a rapid destroyer truck, and you start to see doctrine. Microwaves to suppress the mass, guns to finish the survivors, and interceptors to chase the outliers. That's the kind of layered defense that turns a drone carpet into a drone doormat. But integration isn't just hardware, it's know-how. Europe is now borrowing ideas from Ukraine at institutional scale. Formalizing tech sharing, training missions, and rapid deployment playbooks for counter drone ops. Analysts and leaders say the quiet part out loud. Ukraine is the world's premier drone warfare lab right now, and NATO capitals are importing the lessons. Expect British-directed energy teams to train with Ukrainian air defenders, iterate tactics against AI-assisted swarms, and share telemetry on what actually fries a guidance loop versus what merely annoys it. This isn't charity, it's collective survival. Because those same threats are showing up over Baltic refineries, North Sea platforms, and European ports. All that said, let's talk limitations, because nothing ruins a good idea like forgetting physics. Microwave beams demand power, lots of it, and cooling. Truck mounting helps, but it still creates a logistics tail. In heavy rain or dense fog, effective range can shrink. And yes, adversaries can harden high-value drones with shielding and redundant electronics. That doesn't kill the concept, it changes the economics. If the attacker has to spend $50,000 hardening a drone to survive a beam, they just priced themselves out of the $500 swarm game. That's a victory masquerading as an arms race. Britain's own procurement papers and MOD reporting frame these trials exactly that way. Early capability today, spiral growth tomorrow, and doctrine that embraces contested electromagnetic environments by default. There's also the do no harm to your friends problem. AI enabled friend or foe logic is mandatory when both sides fly thousands of similar airframes. The risk isn't theoretical. Ukrainian units have warned repeatedly about friendly fire fratricide between unmanned platforms operating in the same box, especially during high tempo operations like spiderweb. The fix is part technical, encrypted IFF beacons, behavior-based classifiers, and part procedural, airspace management for drones the way we do for manned aircraft, just at far greater density. Britain's AI research ecosystem and defense innovation programs are pointed at exactly these integration problems. Rapid Destroyer benefits when the ecosystem matures. Operationally, imagine a Ukrainian brigade preparing to punch into a contested grey zone. Overwatch Skyranger 35 ride along the flanks. A Rapid Destroyer truck sets up behind a fold in the terrain, plugged into a common operating pitcher, fed by ground radar and tethered balloons. The RFDEW starts slow low-power sweeps that scramble reconnaissance quads. When the real attack comes, a mixed swarm hiding a handful of high-explosive FPVs, operators spike the beam with timed pulses. Half the cloud falters, the gun systems engage the leakers, interceptor drones chase the rest. On a good day, the microwaves don't just kill drones, they create a surveillance blackout that lets artillery roll to pre-surveyed, hold-down positions. This choreography is why Counter Drone in 2025 is larger than Air Defense. It's Maneuver Warfare, rewritten for the Spectrum. Here's where we add a dash of British understatement. Some assembly required. Power modules need protection. Emission control matters. RFDEW is loud on the electromagnetic map. And Russian EW teams love to hunt loud things. Expect rapid destroyer deployments to hide under camouflage, hop firing points, and travel with decoys that mimic its signature. Expect Doctrine to emphasize multi-truck teams, so one can radiate while another repositions, and a third keeps power and cooling cycles healthy. Expect software updates as often as oil changes, because the enemy's firmware updates weekly too. That's not a flaw, it's the modern condition. Let's zoom out. 
Britain didn't invent microwave weapons in a vacuum. The MOD's push sits beside US work like Thor and alongside a wider Western sprint to industrialize directed energy. When a Financial Times headline reads, UK tests microwave weapon to disable drone swarms, it's signaling more than a prototype win. It's announcing that an entire class of effectors is graduating from science project to procurement track. When Business Insider quips that a shot costs cents, they're dramatizing a real asymmetry, energy versus airframe. In a budget war, that matters. Ukraine's procurement trend lines amplify the point. As Euroscale contracts flow to mobile gun systems and interceptor drones, Rapid Destroyer doesn't replace anything. It multiplies everything. Put one truck on a key logistics node, and it pays for itself the first time it blinds a kamikaze wave that would have shredded fuel bowsers and ammo trucks. Pair it with jammers and decoys, and you compel the attacker to escalate to pricier tools. Great for you, terrible for their accountants. And because Ukraine is now actively sharing drone defense expertise with European partners, Denmark being a prominent example, any British RFD EW that arrives will plug into a community that already experiments, iterates, and updates tactics faster than most defense bureaucracies can file a memo. Three quick realities to keep us honest. First, no single layer holds forever. The enemy will test pulse hardening, optical only navigation, and autonomy that resists RF denial. Second, microwaves don't care about politics. Misaim them and you'll cook a friendly radio net. Training and ROE are as important as wattage. Third, weather remains the rudest staff officer on any battlefield. Rain and aerosol can limit effective range. The counter is redundancy and cross queuing. The way forward is many defenders, many effects. And the good news is Europe is now building that playbook together on purpose. A brief moment for levity before we get too grim. If lasers are scalpels, microwaves are the industrial microwave in the back of a football stadium. Not pretty, not subtle, but the thing that keeps the crowd fed. Rapid Destroyer is basically stadium nachos for drones. Melted circuits on everything. Don't eat the drones. Back to business. What happens when you field Rapid Destroyer at scale along the Ukrainian front? First, ISR becomes less persistent for the attacker, forcing more expensive, riskier penetrations with manned or high-end unmanned assets. Second, logistics nodes can move forward, shortening artillery resupply cycles, vital for keeping tempo against entrenched defenses. Third, morale shifts. There's a human dividend to hearing your operators say, swarm inbound, beam hot, and then watching the sky go quiet. Good doctrine turns that feeling into momentum. And yes, there's an export control and escalation conversation to have. A microwave truck is less politically fraught than a long range missile, but it's still a weapon that disables foreign aircraft even if those aircraft look like hobby drones on steroids. The likely path is incremental. British-Ukrainian trials on Allied soil, joint training with NATO observers, and phased integration into Ukraine's layered defenses around critical infrastructure and core-level headquarters. That mirrors the broader pattern of European-Ukrainian knowledge transfer already underway, where field lessons skip the queue and land directly in procurement notes. The punchline for planners is simple. Rapid Destroyer is not a silver bullet, but it is a silver lever. It forces adversaries to spend more per drone, reveal more emissions while they do it, and accept fewer successful penetrations. It buys defenders the one resource they can never stockpile, time. And time to reload, to reposition, to think, wins battles. Final thought, and then we're out. Operation Spiderweb proved the offense can stitch together distance, deception, and autonomy to strike across a continent. Britain's Rapid Destroyer hints the defense can stitch together sensors, AI, and invisible power to hold the line against that future. The next war will be fought as much in code and kilowatts as in steel and explosives. So ask yourself, when the sky fills with cheap, clever machines, who wins? The side with more drones or the side with the better off switch?